Corey Bradis, StoryCounty.News. We are here visiting with Nate Feldman, who has become um, kind of synonymous. Your family has been kind of synonymous with the Story County community recently, Nate. Um, I want to kind of give you a platform. I, I know it's been covered and talked about, but uh, your family's been dealing with something very difficult in recent time. Um, for our listeners who haven't heard about your story and about your family's story, um, tell our StoryCounty.News readers and listeners um, your, maybe your background a little bit. Sure. Um, uh, our oldest, our first child, William, um, we kind of knew he was falling behind developmentally, um, about four or five months years old. Um, and so they, uh, our pediatrician put him in, um, some occupational therapy, speech therapy and physical therapy just to try and catch him up. And no one kind of knew what was going on. Um, and so, um, we just uh, saw a bunch of different specialists, um, doctors in Iowa City, Des Moines, and Ames, um, to try and figure out what was causing um, his delays. Um, and we found out about a year ago um, that he had a rare genetic mutation in a, in a gene called SLC6A1. Um, it's so rare, the disease does not have a name. Um, it just goes by the gene that's affected, which is that SLC6A1 gene. Um, and um, there's about just under 200 cases worldwide that we know of, um, and he has these global developmental delays, learning disabilities, um, seizures is the kind of main culprit of this disease. Um, at the time of his diagnosis, he was having over 100 seizures a day, um, and we now have a neurologist in Iowa City that we've kind of gathered that and got that under control. Um, but that's kind of the fast... Um, catch up to him now being four years old and, and dealing with this disease on a daily basis. And you and I were talking before we jumped on And by the way, we are here at, at uh, the Brad Morgan concert and, and Lisa Downs has been uh, a part of some of the fundraising efforts I understand for, y for you and your family and, and, and what everything that's going on. Obviously, so many things behind the scene that we can't even imagine. So our thoughts and prayers go out to you and your family. But I do want to touch on briefly that some of the scientific research that you just got done relaying to me about some of the, the progress. Where are things at with this very new and, uh, you know, I guess the verdict is out on, on some of the details of it, but what, it, what, it, what is the latest that you know of as far as research about this disease? Sure. Um, that was kind of our whole um, starting point is what do we do with this diagnosis? And we connected with a, a group, a Facebook group, um, that they um, this foundation was started about a uh, a year prior to our son's diagnosis, um, and they're working on gene replacement therapy. So uh, my son has one good copy of a gene and one bad copy of the gene, and this therapy would essentially be an injection that goes in and cuts out the bad copy um, and inserts the good copy, uh, and basically would be a cure for him and other um, children throughout the world um, that are dealing with this disease. So um, it's kind of fascinating medicine that's relatively new. Um, um, there's been a, a disease that already has been approved by the FDA that's cured in this way. Um, and so we are currently raising funds um, to support that research um, and get that um, pushed through the FDA so that, that he can get some help. How hard is that, too, when you are thinking about so many different diseases? And obviously COVID has been the, the focus within the medical community now for, what, 15, 16 months now. How hard is that, though, when you have so many different diseases and so from a scientific and from a national international standpoint a small number of people that have been recognized to have this or diagnosed so to speak how difficult is that to know that you're fighting against the numbers so to speak Absolutely. That's a very good point. And um, the the main reason we are doing the fundraising as a family and as a community, Story County community, um, is because drug companies don't care about rare disease very much um, because it's not profitable for them to invest in research and development for a, a cure. Um, and the, the gene replacement therapy um, would cost about four to seven million dollars um, to get that push through the FDA. So um, we've kind of had to fight individually as a community, um, as our local communities come together um, to raise the, this, these funds. Um, we're kind of um, climbing up a mountain, so to speak. And um, with COVID, that just kind of brought everything to a halt. Um, our research lab shut down um, and the focus, rightfully so, was on COVID. Um, but um, we're, we're kind of back up and running now. And uh, my family and I are actually going to Dallas 
Dallas next week to meet the team down there um, that's doing the gene replacement therapy and get some initial kind of study work and, and uh, data gathered. And, and again, your story has resonated with a lot of people across the state, um, but maybe talk uh, for just a moment about the local community here in Story County. You're from Story City, so um, what's it like to have uh, the Iowa nice, so to speak? Uh, maybe, I don't know if you put yourself in position of someone who maybe d didn't grow up in small town Midwest. What's that been like, the support you've gotten from the local community? Yeah, it's been incredible. Um, we, when we started, uh, Lisa Downs reached out to my wife. She saw a post, and that's why I'm here um, tonight. Um, and the Cornucopia uh, had a kind of holiday sale and donated 10% uh, of proceeds uh, for the weekend to it. Um, and then it got picked up by Iowa State Athletics as the Iowa State kid captain. Um, and we recently had uh, a way for Will is the, the local foundation name. Um, he had a fun run um, uh, in Story City, which was a 5K and a fun run for kids. Um, and the turnout was exceptional. We just had uh, so many people show their support, people we knew, people we didn't know. Um, and the, the Growing up, I grew up in Jewel, so not too far from here. Um, my wife grew up in McCallsburg, um, so we're kind of local. Um, but just the, the support of a small town, small community um, has been unbelievable. Um, it, Iowa Nice is a real thing. Absolutely, and uh, I'm an Iowa guy myself as well, and, and uh, certainly your story has resonated with me. If people want to give towards the foundation, which again goes to research, right? Um, how can they go about doing that? Maybe on a more informal basis, where they're, you know, when we don't have a formal fundraiser in place. Sure. Um, yeah, so you can go to our son's website at awayforwill.org. Um, that's A W A Y uh, F O R. W I L L uh, dot O R G. Um, so awayforwill.org um, is the main place to donate. Um, Facebook page, you can find my wife or myself on there. Um, there are links to that or the SLC 6A1 Connect group. Um, if you come across that, that's another way to donate. Nate Feldman speaking on behalf of his young son, Will. And uh, again, if you are interested in giving, do not hesitate. Um, towards uh, a great cause, research that uh, can help not only Will, but many, many children, and I'm sure many to come in the future. So, Will, we appreciate the time, and uh, again, we'll, we'll continue to keep, a, keep you and your family in our thoughts and prayers, and, and best wishes going forward. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, storycounty.news signing off here. Corey Brada, we will talk to you soon.